someone to ask me on one of my posts today or one of my videos on my YouTube channel, why did I block them, right? Uh, they want to know why did I block them. I received a text message from uh, this specific individual at, oh, it was midnight my time, right? Central Standard Time. It was uh, past midnight my time. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and the person said they worked the job, um, I think in the nursing field, in which they are work late hours and long hours. And their time zone may not have been adjusted to my time zone. But let me tell you this. If it's pitch dark outside, if it's pitch dark outside, that is too late to text anyone about business. If you can't text or call Lexington Law at 10 o'clock your time, right, and it's pitch dark outside, as we were saying in the South, that's too late to be calling or texting anyone concerning business. And what people don't understand is um, some people might say, well, Queen, you can just silence the phone. Um, you should have two phones, one for business, one for personal. I have all of that. I'm ready to set up, right? My daughter works at Verizon. That's not a problem. I have all of that set up. The point that I am making is that I sift and sort who I want to work with as well. Right. And so if you don't understand business etiquette and business time, I will select or choose not to work with you or to take you on as a client. Why? Because credit repair is a very tedious process. I need to know, right, <laughs> that you're able to follow business etiquette, right? I'm not going to wake up early in the morning and answer any text messages that I receive at midnight or after my business hours. Because in the credit world, in the credit industry, People, that has to be a respect for time, right? You cannot, right, or you should not contact that credit card company and say, listen, I live in Pacific time zone. I knew that my 30 days um, of, to pay on my credit card had expired, but I sent the payment in at midnight Right. Or I sent the payment in if you're in California at 10 o'clock. And the company says, well, we're on Eastern Standard Time. So that payment was not processed to after midnight, which was the next business day. And you try to explain to the company, well, that wasn't my time. It doesn't matter what's the business of hours of that company and what time zone are they in. So it doesn't matter about your time zone, right? And I'm and Hazu says get a pager. I guess he's he's making fun. Let me tell you something. If someone, if anyone texts me at that time of night, period, with a T on the end, I will not take you on as a client. You do not understand time or business etiquette. I will not work with a person for maybe up to three months or six months on credit that does not get that. And the person commented that I'm blocking money, right? When I block their number, I'm also blocking money because they had the money to pay. No, I'm blocking a headache. Let me sip on that. I'm blocking a headache. I'm blocking a person that doesn't understand business etiquette. I'm blocking a person who in the midpoint of the day or night, right? Yeah, period, period. We're not understand business equity, right? And, you know, I used to see this mainly in, on the secretary's wall, right? 
um, uh, if you work as a secretary, whether it's in the school system, whether it's for this big corporation. And a secretary will always have this sign usually. And I understand what that secretary means, right? That an emergency, lack of, no, I'm saying it backwards, lack of planning on your part does not constitute an emergency on my part. Right? <laughs> you said drops the mic. Lack of planning on your part does not constitute an emergency on my part. And when you don't understand business hours and business etiquette, these are usually the actions and the profile of a person with bad credit, right? Or who is not optimizing or using their credit, right? To invest. Priscilla says to run a business, be professional, respectful. And see, this is the thing, this is the thing. You have people that try to tell you how to run a business with a job mindset. Listen, our money is not good money. When it comes to business, all money is not good money. And you should not accept everyone who wants to be a client. See, I know you're not used to that. Because on a job, they tell you, Let's, I'm going to let you all answer this or finish this. On the job, they train you and teach you that the customer is always what? I'm going to let you finish this. Because I'm going to show you how people have been brainwashed, right? On the job, when you're employed, the customer is always what? Right. You have to respect boundaries, even in business. I'm not going to respond to uh, a text that send me messages after business hours. As a matter of fact, even call me after business hours. I'm not. And the thing about that, I'm waiting on you out. Thank you. The job they teach you, the customer is always right. That's not true in the business world. That's not true in the business world. Thank you so much, King Copper. See, they want to make you a good employee or economic slave. That's the thing that embed in your brain. Customers are always right. I can pull your credit report and tell you you're not always right. Mm -mm. I can pull your credit report and tell you that you are, you're not always right. You didn't pay that bill, so it went into collection. You're not always right. You have 30, 60, 90, 120 day late payments. You're not always right. You don't pay accounts as agreed on time. No backlash, but I'm just being, let's be honest. And you know what? I listened to this live stream today on um, YouTube. And this man um, that helps with credit repair or restoration uh, was reading some emails, right? Was reading some emails. Thank you so much, Stephen. And one of the emails came from uh, one of his viewers and it said, that they had enrolled with the credit repair company and they had paid $1,200 to receive a credit suite, right? $1,200. And they got the credit, the credit suite, right? The, the business did as agreed, but however, when you get a credit suite done, what that means is you are claiming you are a victim of identity theft. And so once you claim that you are a victim of identity theft and that some negative accounts were a result of identity theft, the credit agencies will temporarily remove those accounts, right? Because you are stating that you are not the person who created that charge off of that collection. Someone stole your identity. So in order to not have your credit file affected negatively for something you did not do, supposedly, the credit agency will temporarily remove those accounts to investigate. 
they could take up to 30 to 45 days, right? So once they find out that it's not true, if it's not true, the accounts will be replaced or placed back on your credit report. So um, this, this potential client or client was stating that, oh, they robbed me of my $1,200. Now I have all those negatives back. And the, the, the man that was doing the live stream said, you know, you shouldn't have to pay thousands of dollars for credit repair, right? Right. That's what the man said. You shouldn't pay thousands of dollars. And I'm thinking to myself, I don't know why you, why not? I removed thirty thousands of dollars, of forty, fifty thousand dollars of bad debt off people credit. So twelve hundred dollars probably will be just ten percent of the bad thousands of dollars reported on that credit report. Why should not? Why shouldn't you invest? thousands of dollars, especially if you have thousands of dollars of bad debt and credit report on your credit report, right? And he says, you know, that's why I only charge $99 a month, right? Because I offer premium services, but I don't charge premium products. And I thought to myself, by the time that person stays with you for 10 months to a year, which is what the process would take, they're going to have to pay, they're going to pay you $1,200 as well. It's just in smaller increments, right? And so, listen, this is the type of stuff. And I don't mean in a home, right? I don't mean in a home. But if you have not paid people, if you have not paid lenders who lended you money or gave you an opportunity, to make money by lending you money or extending you credit. If someone does, and I hope this doesn't happen to anyone, but if a business does not perform as you thought, as expected, and you invested in that business, um, I've heard more examples of people not paying bills as is agreed with bad credit versus that people that have taken, taken people money and not did the credit repair for them. Now I hear little stories every now and then, but you know what, this is what I don't understand. And maybe you all can help me. Why is it that when people pay Lexington Law, for example, $100 a month or $99 a month, and after 10 to 12 months, they don't get any results. Why is it that you are why why is it that you all don't go and file a small claims against listen to law? Why isn't that you don't go live on someone's live stream and, and tell you about how listen to law robbed you and you paid out twelve hundred or five or six hundred dollars? Why don't you go to your local courthouse or why don't you go to the Better Business Bureau and report listen to law? Why don't you call us still our business at midnight or 10 o'clock your time? Why don't you go live on YouTube and bash less to law? Because let's be honest, most people that's doing credit repair and restoration and rebuilding are people of the black and brown community, right? That's doing it in an effective manner. So why don't you handle lesson to law like you would handle someone in the black and brown community? Why can't you respect someone in the black and brown community in the creative consulting business like you would respect lesson to law? Would you call lesson to law that late? Even if they had a text number, would you text them that late? Or would you say, you know what, it is late? And night, uh, I'll just send an email, right? Wouldn't that be better business etiquette? 